Keeping track of the resources in your factory can be a challenge, and you don't want to wait until something runs out to realise there's a problem. You could go around and fit speaker alarms to every storage area, or you could go a step further and build a bar chart display like this one that Tristan designed during our Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 game. This chart gives an easy to read impression of which resources are running low, without having to worry about trying to remember whether a full supply of iron plates is 10,000 or 50,000. Welcome to Lawrence Place Factorio, where I'm going to show you how to construct one of these displays and hook it up to your factory. The graph display is made up of lights. These can be placed down like this, but by default they'll only come on at night and they'll be white. It's not quite what we're looking for. If you link them to the circuit network, however, then you can specify some conditions. For example, let's set this light to enable when iron plates is less than 100. Because it's not connected to any storage with iron plates, the light immediately comes on. If I connect it to a chest and dump some iron plates into it, you'll see that when this contents hits 100, the light goes out. Great, we've now got an alert light that can be used to warn us when supplies of a resource are low. Let's put in a constant combinator as well and link that in. In the Signals section of the Combinator's options, there's a row of colours. If I select red and then take the iron back, the light still shows white, but if I now edit the lamp options again, I can tick the Use Colours box and boom, the light goes red. Much more appropriate for a warning light. You can use any of the colours, but note that the black and grey will just give you a white light, which is probably for the best. These are the basic building blocks of making a display graph. We can make quite a simplistic one straight away. Place down 10 lamps in a row, wire them all together, and to the same input we were using before. Work along the line, setting each one to turn on when there's a different number of plates available, but this time use greater than. For example, the bottom one should be iron plates greater than 100, and use colours, then iron plates greater than 200, and so on. This is fiddly and time consuming. Copy and paste helps a bit with it, but it's still not ideal. But once this is configured, you'll see the lights come on in sequence as I chuck stacks of plates into the box. Lovely, but there are still a few things wrong with this system, and we'll look at them in turn. The first is that the lights are all red, even when the quantity is perfectly acceptable. This isn't what I want. I want the lights to go green when the supply is sufficient. So I'll put in a pair of decider combinators at the top like this, and link them in. For this, I'm using a single piece of cable to connect both ends of each combinator. Now I can get rid of the constant combinator we were using to set the colour before, making the lights go white, and then program the colour with the new decider combinators. If iron plates is less than or equal to 300, then output 1 red, and then also on the other one, if iron plates is greater than 300, output 1 green. This gives you two colours to play with, and if you leave a gap between them, then you could have white in the middle. Alternatively, you can take advantage of the priority order of the colours. If you feed multiple colours to a lamp, it doesn't try to mix them, it just chooses the first one in the list, and you can see the order of the list when you're setting the signals. If there's a red signal, that will take priority, then green, blue, yellow, and so on. This means that you can easily have red, yellow, and green by setting red to come on if the resource is less than a certain number, yellow if it's above that number, and green if it's above a higher number you don't need to have an upper limit on yellow. Now, if I load the chest up with plates, you'll see the line grow and the colour change. This works great, but setting it up is all a bit manual. Every lamp has its resource and its number hard-coded, so building this out to work with lots of resources would take forever, and adjusting it when you expand your factory and can store 10,000 iron instead of 1,000 would be a faff. Let's redesign it for easy copy-pasting. I'm going to start off with the cutoffs for each light by placing an arithmetic combinator and setting it to take the input Y value and add 10, then output it as signal Y. If I then copy this combinator and place it one row above, then link the output of the bottom one to the input of the top one, I'll have 10 and 20 on the outputs like this. My plan is to use percentages of full, so let's repeat that several more times until we get to 100. Make sure you overlap the combinators as you copy them so that the cable gets copied too. There, numbers from 10 to 100. Now, I'll put in another arithmetic combinator at the bottom. This one will look at the number of iron plates and divide it by 100 
and output it as x. You need to choose this number to be a hundredth, that is 1%, of your total capacity for that resource. So in this case, I'm saying that my storage will be full at 10,000 iron plates. This is still manual, but because it's only set in one place, it will be trivial to change it later. Now let's put in the first light. This is at the bottom of the column, so we want it to come on if the supply is more than 10% full, that is, if x is greater than y. So let's wire it in. I've used red cables on the left already, so let's stick with that, run a red cable from the Y combinators to the light. Now, the value from the bottom X combinator is going to need to go to the light above this one as well, and we can't link the Y values together, so X has to be carried on a green cable, like this, so that the two signals don't get combined. Now we can configure the light. We want it to enable when x is greater than or equal to y, and you need to use greater than or equal here, not just greater than, because we want the top light to come on when the storage is completely full. We also want to turn on use colours, because we'll be setting that up later too. Now that we have one light configured, we can copy it and the y combinator next to it to the next row up like this. We'll need to place the green cable manually for this one, but now we can copy both lights and combinators and carry on up the chain, again remembering to overlap them as before. Finally, for this column, let's add the colours. Put three decided combinators at the top, and as before, set your colour limit. I'm going to choose that if x is less than 33, then output one red, then if x is greater than or equal to 33, output one yellow, and if x is greater than 66, output one green. You'll notice that these numbers don't match any of the y values we set. They don't have to. The colours and the y values can be completely independent. Link these in with green cable, connecting all of the inputs and outputs together. It's also nice to stick a speaker on the top of the column and program it to display an alert when you're low on a resource, so I'll put this here. Link it up with the green cable and set it up. I don't want it to make a noise, it's, it's not that important, but I do want it to show an alert. Let's say to trigger when x is less than 20. I can now put in a generic message here saying resource warning, or I could use an icon and a specific message such as iron plate shortage. If you customise them for the resource, it's another thing you'd have to update when you copy in a new column, but it's so much more helpful when one pops up. Now because we don't have any iron plates, you'll see the alert icon at the bottom of the screen. We've now completed a full column, so let's test it by hooking it up to a chest and filling it up. Each thousand plates makes an extra light come on. At 2000 the alert goes off, and when it gets to 3300 the lights go yellow as expected. Of course, the chest can only fit 4800 plates, so we don't see it fill all the way up to the top. Let's fix that by changing the limit. 1% of 4800 is 48, and now all the lights are on. If I unload the chest instead, we can watch them all go out. We're nearly there now, that's one column, but there are more resources in a factory than just iron. Copy the entire column and paste it in next to this one. Now link up the red wires. You can either do them all manually, or just do one or two and then copy the lights and paste them so that the wires get created automatically. Now we can choose our resource for this column, let's say copper plates, and if necessary change the divisor. Different resources are likely to be stored in different quantities. You'll probably have more iron plates buffered than yellow science packs. Now link it to the input from the factory and it's ready to go. Further columns are even easier. Copy two or more existing columns and paste them in. Once again, making sure you overlap by one and all the cables will be added for you. The only thing you need to change is the resource type that you're measuring and the alert. Do note that you probably accidentally reprogrammed the previous column as well due to the overlapping paste, so you'll need to fix that. Ideally, you'll always have one free, unused column at the end of your graph, so it won't matter if it gets overwritten. The final step is to link this graph to all of your storage areas. This will typically be the stations where those resources wait to be picked up. I recommend that you make a rail blueprint that includes pylons with the coloured cables already on them, but you can run the cable manually if you've already built your train network. If you're playing space exploration, doing this from the navigation satellite is much easier than running around on foot. As you're placing more columns, eventually you'll run into the side of a substation. This design is too tall to allow them to just be placed above and below. That's fine though, you can leave a gap in the graph, you'll just need to link the cables in manually to bridge it. There's also no reason to limit yourself to 10 rows on your graph. 
If I cut the top light and the combinators above it, I can move them up an extra 10 squares and then copy a chunk of the lights and combinators from below to fill the gap, overlapping as always. Now I need to change the Y values, so I edit the bottom combinator, set it to plus 5 instead of plus 10, and then shift right click to copy, shift left click and drag to paste onto all of the other combinators. Now we have all the same colour cutoffs, and a full bar still means 4800, but there's twice the detail in the graph. I think this is as far as I want to take the system in this video. It works very nicely to give you an overview of your ores, your plates, circuits, even science packs if you want, as well as alerting you when you're starting to run low. I do plan to make a follow-up video with some ideas involving using signals and trains, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. If you like this design, if you try it out, or if you have any suggestions for improving it, let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if there's anything else you think I should make a tutorial for. I'm always interested to hear new ideas. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.